يعني بدأت التسجيل Okay, welcome everyone. We uh, we want to welcome you in this uh, program, which is part of um, uh, the project of uh, unpacking the archives in Art East. The program that we are discussing, that you will be seeing the different films of it online uh, on the uh, Art East platform, which is Egypt Dreams and, and Nightmares. Um, which uh, tackling the works of uh, four different filmmakers, artists, uh, on the question of uh, questions of history and utopia and dystopia in the Egyptian context, um, uh, especially in the modern contemporary history of Egypt uh, after the, uh, uh, the time of uh 52 uh, movement 1952 movement because we have um um uh, four filmmakers with four different styles with different production uh frameworks um uh, we have atiyat al adnudi that we are having we are celebrating her memorial in, in october and atiyat al adnudi is uh, 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 a very important filmmaker uh, working on uh, uh, different styles of documentary, mainly tackling the issue of related to um, um, uh, documentaries from feminist perspective in the issues of um, uh, women in Egypt. She's coming from the generation of decolonization and national location in Egypt. Her films that we are screening in this program, three films, that she did in 80s and 90s, uh, Principal Dreams and Girls Still Dream and Brawya, Principal Dreams in 1982, and uh, 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 Girls Still Dream in uh, 1995, and Brawya in 1996. This film is uh, 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 from this time before the uh, Egyptian Revolution in 2011, and we have. Um, three other uh, works from the time from this uh, past decade after the uh, 2013, three different works by uh, filmmakers and artists. And we are having uh, uh, this discussion uh, uh, with uh, the three contemporary filmmakers that we have. We have Magid Nader, who's a filmmaker, Muhammad Abdel Karim, who's an artist and researcher, Asim Hindawi, who's um, um, uh, artist and researcher, and we have with us also Maris Khaleda, she's an um, uh, anthropologist, and uh, uh, this, her work is mainly, his research is mainly invested in the um, uh, labor and um, uh, political economy of the creative sectors and the uh, uh, media cultures, and um, regarding the question of um, uh, this main uh, question in this program, the question of the discussion of history and utopia and dystopia, this I want to start with Marie's on uh, the question of these three films, which, as I said, um, we have two profiles, uh, a profile of Umm Saeed Aziz and the profile of um, uh, artist Rawia, and we have also a quite different style, which is coming from a production of uh, uh, the uh, uh, nourishing sector of NGOs in 90s uh, in Egypt, which is was the, 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 the production framework of girls, uh, still uh, dream so these films and we always used to the the style of close shots of uh, female subjects um narratives that uh observed by the camera of Atiyat and the gaze of Atiyat that it's and through this gaze she's trying to construct in deconstruct different I believe different uh, mainstream official narratives 
Uh, my first question of Marie's, um, of how do you think, or how do you see this films by Atiyat now? And also in relation to the other three films and the question of, uh, of history and utopia and those topics. Hi, everyone. Uh, thank you, Ali, for the invitation. It's uh, really a pleasure to think with those films. I haven't, I have watched Atiyah's films before, uh, and I'm only revisiting now for this. Um, and um, I think it's really uh, fascinating, like the idea of dreams and nightmares in Egypt in the contemporary moment. Um, and uh, although Atiyah's films are slotted in the dreams section, uh, I found them really nightmarish. Um, and um, that's because we tend to forget that dreams and nightmares are are two sides of the same coin, more or less. That that duality of um, of of them is is basically the same thing: the ideation of hope and fear. Um, and I mean, there is long philosophy about hope and fear in Spinoza and so on. But uh, I feel like it's really corresponding very uh, compellingly with the other three films that the dose of hope that Atiyot um, creates in, in her portrait of the women, even though uh, uh, even though they're super close-ups, as you say, um, they're magnified to counter the, the fears and the terror that is around them. Um, they, we can see that flipped in the other, the three contemporary films. Um, and there are different notes that I will bring up that we could discuss with the filmmakers. Um, but first, like you were saying, in situating and watching these films, we need to like recognize their temporality and also their futurity. So in the moment of um, the first film, Impossible Dreams, that's 82, uh, we have very strong presence of decoloniality, of the rage and the riz or uh, again for for the israelis for occupation for displacement um but in the background we can see constant labor constant domestic labor it's like you run out of breath watching the the hearing but also all the background is constant buzz of um of very localized and peripheral labor that is not in the capital for example and that reminds me or like draws a parallel with Megid's film, uh, or most of what follows is true, of the constant walking and following uh, of the seeking to find something. And that movement um, is, it also makes you feel out of breath um, in a way. Um, and those are countered uh, in Atiyot's films with the very, um, the banality of talking about death and the banality of talking about labor. and um the the extreme fierceness of Aziza and her narrative um but also that extended current of um of constant movement is also paralleled again I think in Hindewi's film um all uh in Hindewi's film in the constant movement but it's almost like the meta labor that structures those very personal localized experiences and if we move to the 90s, of course, we like a little bit cringe about like how developmentalist it sounds and with the work of NGOs, but also that was the time and the height of enjoyization of women's rights and women's empowerment and development. And um, but I really think on some level, um, on some level, Atiyat was really subversive in using that available format with all the scrutiny and censorship and so on. She kind of, um, she talks about it in multiple interviews as poetic realism. Um, and I think she has combined that with something like Spivak's, um, of course, like the whole discourse, it's the subaltern is speaking. So like, that's the, the main, um, the, the surface layer. But I think she does something else when she combines it with uh, sort of a strategic essentialism of um, getting through or navigating all the um, all the scrutinies that she has to walk through around that same time to um, to sort of capture a vitality in in what motivates people through that hope and how do they navigate those fears and how they counter them in some way and that again. Um, um, kind of mirrored again in, in Rawiya in 1995, but here we can see a more individualistic or individualized image. And it's also in line with um, with a way of 
navigating the, the circumstances. Um, but from the last two films, we can see a constant reinvocation of the exit, of the going abroad, of the idea of complete independence or freedom or emancipation in that sense that is tied to education and to going abroad. And I think that also corresponds, um, I, like maybe a parallel with Abdel Karim's gazing in the way of the exodus from the main city or the the sort of the extreme dystopia that where 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 would be an exit in a way uh, or the idea of um, of emancipation having to be uh, an individuated um, uh, escape um, and it really struck me the 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 line in in Abdel Karim's film where he says. Um, you can in the old capital you can go underground and be invisible and it made me think of the protagonists of Atayot of um whether that that you sort of um mm, uh, uh, autonomy of being underground in a way what happens when the person is actually invisible in the main city in the periphery of the city when the subject is um is not their fight or their liberation doesn't depend on escaping the system, but they're actually already in the periphery or in the trenches of uh, what is disregarded by the system. And that maybe could bring us back to uh, Megid's and Hindewi's films of how the, 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 the poetics are played differently uh, or the poetic, the, uh, the poetic realism plays differently. And in Megid's film where we can see a sort of, this was a documentation of a place that was completely removed, but the, the, the sort of ha haunting sense uh, or the, uh, the ontology of seeking something or trying to reconstruct the story um, uh, of loss and of decay and of dystopia how does it sit with the visuality of sort of the meta theoretical sort of machines of governance that Hindewi kind of brings in uh, in his in his film um, so those are just some initial thoughts but to um, but it was but for Atayot I think um, I think it's really um, impressive how how she doses or like sort of Placed the trick of hyper focusing on a very individuated, easily digestible, easily um, uh, you can easily sympathize with all the protagonists, but all of the background sort of noise and information is um, is sort of magnifying the nightmares or the nightmarishness of those dreams, and I think that duality is kind of. Um, important to think with the doses of hope and fear that are spring, spring, uh, sprinkled um, in Atayot's films. But also, I'd like to hear from the filmmakers here to what would the, their thoughts be around this. Thank you, Marie, so much for this um, insights. I think this, um, and I want you to, to, to to borrow and to go to house and from these insights and um, um, because again I want to 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 reflect and and we think together and we question that we, the, these images and how the yacht film the three films in in the com comparing different documentary styles and have three films related so much to her uh, production. The first film, which is Prems and Dreams, is a pop production. Uh, Rawia is a kind of a commission from Evelyn Center and for the Clay Arts and, and Fayum, and also the, 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 the last one I mentioned before, which is Mental Funding, um, Developmental NGO Funding. The question of the space of negotiation that she is trying to build in the three films. And I totally agree with Marie's win that it's, there is for sure uh, a nightmarish background, the whole film, that it's, we see through thinking of uh, the national cause in the history of Egypt or the national framework in the history of Egypt since the history of the modern Egypt in 19th century and 20th century, and seeing these films in 80s and 90s, and this hard labor of these subjects on land, 
uh, as working as business on land, which is still continuous, as I'm quite uh, uh, tempted to 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 stay with the with the with the, the, def uh, the, the definition of the permanent catastrophe that it's still because uh, that we still live um, through this uh, background of the national framework the the images of of this um, uh, uh, permanent catastrophe there is this impulses out of the negotiation with uh, patriarchal thoughts, patriarchal beliefs, patriarchal uh, practices, and also for these different women, for these different subjects, out of even domestic labor. The space of the home, for example, in principal dreams, it's not only um, um, only for domestic labor. Also, she's trying to build her own commerce, dealing with milk, selling and buying milk and all of this, they try to have a very minimum of autonomy that 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 she could afford, a dream that, that she could afford, that which is in, in the way the one uh, uh, this term that Atiyot took the title from the dreams of the dreams. The same thing of Rawia, which is her relationship with her father, her relationship with the hard labor of the land of the countryside. But also she has the impulse of like, she wants to travel to Switzerland, she wants to be a prominent artist, she wants to go in the direction of the autonomy of, of, uh, of, of that she could go through working as an artist and to becoming an artist. And also the, the different, um, 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 the different people that we need from in the films of, girls still dream in the different places in Egypt that they struggling to get a bit of autonomy uh, uh, through education or through um, struggling with the uh, the, patriarch the patriarchal framework that they are living in. So there is for sure the nightmarish background, for sure there is the national framework, but we still we have a utopian impulse that I could, I could argue that it's is for is for me at least is watching the three other films by Megid and the Cream and the Awesome, which is this magnificent idea that Awesome is stressing on upon in his film. In this, because we have uh, three films, the three films of Megid, the Cream and Awesome, which is dealing with. A, way, a certain world making they are trying to do through the films, and Asim bring to us this idea of the future present, that that it's it's a present that's quite cancelling also any idea of of a, of of an exit um, through this trip that we had in after this ten years uh, since two thousand thirteen, and this utopian impulse is that we could be a, an old become an old new for us become a become a, a bit of a, a bit a bit of a dream a bit of ambition a bit of a utopian impulse that we could have in this three films by Atiyot. Um, but the whole idea of uh, building this world of through a theory faction of future present and discussing the idea of infrastructure, building uh, these speculated images through CGI images and all of this, which is actually trying to announce thermally uh, uh, the, the collapse of the infrastructure of the national ideology as the, the full collapse of the national ideology. And, um, and that we are in what what Asim called, I think, is is a new old uh, that's still dominating us. So Asim, if you could elaborate more in the in in why that you choose to 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 fully um, 
manipulate, curate, create uh, this world to build this fiction theory uh, of of the idea of of thinking of a new infrastructure, a new imagination of of a political imagination, also artistic imagination, um, dealing with the idea of future prison. We don't hear you. You're muted. No. Okay, so Asim is quite dealing with uh, with uh, a bit of the technical problem. We could uh, switch to to drop the cream, and then um, um, uh, we get back to Asim later. Um, I think the same um, question for me is, um, which is quite uh, very present in the the, the work of uh, the Kareem Gizim and Seeing, which is out of the very landscape images that we build. Sorry, Ali, to interrupt. You have, uh, uh, can you check if Asim is, uh, yeah. Good. Yeah, I'm here. Can you hear me now or? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, sorry. So I, I I will take the question with Abi Kirim and then we get back to Asim. Sure, sure. Because I, I was thinking of the um of the this landscape images of a city. Um, um which is mainly built on landscape images and fictional future near future maybe narrative of this um question of the binary or the question of the of dialectic of we could say of utopia and there is a certain i think uh, uh, understanding of utopia that it's trying a dominant understanding of utopia that it's we see in gazing and seeing which is quite in its uh, in its very definition has uh, our leads to a dystopia. This isolated utopia of a uh, of a uh, back to past, back to earth, back to mother earth, but back to nature kind of uh, of ideology, uh, isolated, very dreamy, very romantic that. That uh, could take us to to a very dystopic uh, and two different uh, options in the dystopia, and we choose the better option in dystopia as 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 uh, uh, going through so much in this uh, dystopian thing, which is we have uh, uh, images of a. Of a vacant city, which is could be out of the narrative that take us to to any metropolitan could could be different. So, um, and why my question mainly is why you choose images of this vacant landscape to to build to build this kind of of discussion and this moving between utopia and dystopia and utopia and this failure of utopia that takes us to dystopia. As 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 um, as a reflection of uh, of what I see also a reflection on this idea of of future present. Okay, Ali. Uh, 
Yeah, I will try to think with you about uh, regarding the what you call it like a city, which is as you as you mentioned, is a, uh, although the the material itself it come from a specific city, but uh, uh, the shot itself and the composition try to somehow abstract uh, the city from uh, uh, from certain oh, let's call it like geoparticularity, for example. Uh, it come. It relates to what I actually what I position myself in in, in speculative fiction when it comes to futurity, uh, which I actually somehow contemplate what I call like from dystopia under the umbrella of the notion or the dichotomy or a dystopian utopian uh, thing is the negative attitude. What I call the negative attitude towards the future. You know, like a sort of. Uh, uh, not as an effect, not as a psychic effect, but as a rational tool. So, yeah, somehow this idea of there is somehow like a, a collective uh, effect of uh, uh, negativity, or uh, let's call let's call it you know like or simplify it as uh, like uh, a notion of pessimism toward uh, the future. But how to utilize this negativity or pessimity to be like a rational tool uh, that try to uh, critique the surround or the living present somehow and speculate upon the living present uh, uh, a future or a world uh, to build a world and future not as just a speculative uh, uh, component but as somehow also to resonate to the living in still like resonating or relating or as a paradigm let's call it uh, or a methodology to think about the living, uh, uh, the living uh, present. So uh, there's different elements, you know, like you're talking about Bawat al Khudr, for example, with the, the city that, you know, the, the community that I created uh, as a, let's call it like a certain uh, intellectual uh, uh, ecologist uh, Fugitive somehow uh, get out, get get out of the of the city of the old city to create uh, the subjective utopia for for themselves. So the spec you know, the spectacle of the fiction here for me like it was somehow like how you can create a tool that critique in you know, like an assumption of what somehow what a collective utopia imagination could be and. And somehow also like this kind of utopia as as different as happened already in different uh, subversive projects that the utopia and dystopia became like non binary like it has a non binary line between both of them not just transform like transformation from utopia to dystopia or uh, vice versa but uh, but this idea of like it's not there's no like uh, somehow a clear distinction between uh, uh, the imaginative uh, like world of utopia or dystopia more than you know like a, a spectrum or a subjective spectrum of where you where you situate yourself maybe you're you know for some communities or for some uh, ideologies or for some position the utopia is my dystopia and my utopia is their dystopia so from this idea of you know like how to deconstruct uh uh, the notion of utopia dystopia as as exodus or fugitives get out in a time of the crisis from a certain city as you said like a city which is here oh yeah the footage coming from already in the most of the footage uh already you know shot in cairo but here like cairo does not exist as cairo but as just a city uh yeah, maybe I just drifted out of your question, but uh... <laughs> uh... no. But I think it's it's also so much uh, meeting with, uh, as I mentioned, with uh, with Austin in the concepts of the future, present, and new old, and all new, and all of this um, um, proposals and Austin's films. Um, which is, uh, I want to get back to Austin of as, as what we see of um, this, this whole national framework that we see 
the three forms of Atiyat function N, trying to, in these frameworks of nightmarish catastrophic in the three films and also the national framework, trying to catch something out of these subjects of their struggles to autonomy, of their struggles of, for pity of future. Um, by 2013, we find we reach the full collapse of it and the full collapse of the national ideology and the full collapse of the, of the whole national framework. Um, and we, but still, I think, a methodology, the still the utopian impulse, I believe it's still uh, alive in it, but not the national framework itself. What we, what we, um, what we see suggested in the Asim's films is, is certain affirmations uh, that starting from this collapse of the national ideology and uh, the question that we I want him to 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 elaborate for us more about it about this navigation in uh, CGI welded building welded making images. Uh, of uh, a question of the infrastructure, a question of uh, future present, they uh, concepts of a new old and old new. Uh, Asim, could you tell us to lead us more to guide us more about this navigating through these images? Yeah. Right. Uh, Maybe you can do what what he did last time, awesome, and just get out and come back again. Yeah, he will get back again. again. Yeah. I think we we give him another try uh, and an, another postponement. So uh, so he wants to. I think uh, will join us again. Uh, also of. Um, uh, in the question of total different style in negative films that it's which is we can, are in can, sorry can, can we just wait for Austin to any leave and join again because I think or I'm I'm losing track of his question in a way and maybe yeah. if he tries to do it now and it works he can sort of talk directly and then I don't know if Austin hears us or not. Uh... Well, it's okay, whatever you prefer. I think he's taking some problem. time. He's taking, it looks like he's taking some time. I think we... we yeah, yeah, okay. Can, we, for the can you hear me now? Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I'm really sorry about this. I always get these problems, Manish. Is it clear? Can I speak? No, no, it's, okay. It's, it's okay, yeah. Yeah, hello. Yeah, yeah, I'm so can... sorry for this disturbance. No, it's okay. So we, we we take your answer and then we get back to Nagat. Uh, sure. Uh, thank you so much first for the invitation, Ali, and thank you everybody here. Um, I think uh, like just to try to think about uh, all the points you brought up and Marie's and, and Abdel Karim, I would like to start with this point you spoke of as the space of negotiation. 
uh, in the works of Atiyat al Abnodi, but also in the works of uh, the artist here. And I would like to think about that in terms of like the main decisions that we're taking primarily uh, in the making of the film, Everything Under Heaven. And you can say, as you mentioned, that this space of negotiation, whatever we can, we can yeah, any debate on how we to define it, uh, is present strongly uh, in Atiyot's film because uh, she's still uh, operating within that uh, national ideology, national framework, in a way. Um, but for me, there was a decision that, you know, this framework does not exist or does not matter in that way. And that reflects not just about uh, the content of the film, but the, in, the production. Like, Atiyah uh, goes to these villages, talks to these women, she's very involved, she's very immersed. But I chose to make a, a CGI narrative that basically two person can create it, the whole world uh, in, their, in their home. So there is a decision to actually be this jointed from all that narrative and, and these images or representation. And even in the narrative itself in the film, you see a kind of uh, like time is thrown out of joint, not just about the narrative that it's, that it's, that it, that it, that it's telling, but the images you see. So you see images from a future derelict or destroyed new capital, for example. You know, you see uh, you see images of the financial district in total ruins. You know, in a in a in a certain speculative future that is, you know, a thousand years or ten years from now is bound to happen. And for me, these images were important to be there uh, in a way. You know, it's a it's a kind of a political decision. I am going to see this project in that way. You know what I mean? Um, in a sense, and and that takes me to uh, also like to talk about the form itself. It's a theory fiction. It's a yeah. It has a lot of abstraction and theory, but I still it's still a fiction. So there is a certain determination to be tunnel visioned around seeing certain social and political phenomena in a in a particular way. Uh, so, for example. Um, the whole the whole thesis or uh, proposition about the role of infrastructure uh, in that national framework in that national cosmology as as I call it uh, is important because uh, the, the the when you think about infrastructure it's totally um, aligned and was a core at the core of that national project from 1952. Uh, through the building of new cities, through the project of uh, High Dam of Aswan, it's the, that kind of emancipatory moment where the citizen, you know, try to reclaim its infrastructure, its land, its all the all the means of production from an oppressor um, um, uh, uh, colonist to build its own national identity towards that. And the film argues that there has been a, some kind of disjoinment between the materiality of these infrastructural ideals and the, the narrative beyond it, or that constitute these, and they become a certain kind of a tool of technology. Like there was a post-2011 post moment where everybody jumps on TV and talks about how we all need a national project. Whatever is this national project, it could be a, like pure fiction. It could be building lands around the Nile. It could be uh, mining for water in the desert. It could be a new Swiss canal, blah, blah, blah. And obviously, you, you ended up with a new capital and, uh, and the new Alamein city that, you know, their, their destiny is really obscure and unknown for now. So um, there, these kind of... It's, it's this loop that turns the infrastructural project from the material uh, that, that, that kind of strips away the infrastructure projects from the material effect that should have and turns them towards of a, an ideological mismaking tool that what mattered for me in that film, right? It's a way to create a, a narrative about your own method of statecraft of governance. 
just to give it life and it's it's a model that has been yani uh, exhausted through and through in the last 40 or 50 years uh, in Sadat al Mubarakstan and 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 it becomes this um, constant um, yani stretching of that present moment um, toward creating these fictional futurities within it, but they are not actually futurities. You just, it's a ontology of the past that 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 uh, takes form as a stretching of that uh, and, 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 a, and a sort of attrition of that present in a way. I don't know if that answers Yanni, your question, but these are some of the initial thoughts about. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah, yeah, thank you so much, Asim. And uh, also, I think of of there is two proposals here that we see of of this future present that you are mentioning here that 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 you see in in that you see a, a wreckage, you see Romans in this whole filled promise of uh, of. Uh, um, a new promise of a of a national project or a national framework or, or a national ideology, the the that we see it in the CGI image, as as a, to, as as a full romance, a tour a full wreckage image of of the collapse of this. We see the image of the collapse, that it's which is for me takes me to this idea of future present, which is it is. It is collapsed in the future and it's collapsed in the prison. This promise of a new capital, amazing thing that it's, but we see a collapse of, of, of the, the severe failure of, of its infrastructure that we, that we even live in with the whole power failures and that we even struggling in uh, uh, making this recording, that it's the, the full failure of an infrastructure which is it's not uh, it's not only the promise of the future it is filled in the present where there is also that it's we 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 don't really know if it's if it's a present or a future in we see it in this image we see it in also in another proposal in the Abdi Karim image with this full vacant metropolitan which is a super vacant metropolitan that it it is only uh, an environment of this dystopian faction that 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 we are thinking of in the film, and actually to to go to to Nader because Nader uh, actually uh, take, wonder uh, take us uh, took, take us in the deep of the collapse actually in his film, like in building a faction style. <laughs> Through a very Byzantine documentary style, through to build this this actually emotion of of wreckage and collapse, which is in a way um, ends in a flip of 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 this mystic uh, element that makes. Uh, 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 Next, uh, maggots films, which is not only a it is uh, a fiction film, and also trying to build a world. So I'm actually um, so much interested. The maggot could tell us more of like how you, which is happens in different works by maggot as a cinematographer, uh, his cinematography in other films of like how you build fiction through uh, observation, through. Uh, documented through receiving images. Uh, thank you, everyone, for this very interesting discussion. Uh, and thank you, Ali, for the invitation. Um, yeah, so actually, I think it's it's like the, the, the whole thing about uh, that's happening in a lot in the last few years in Cairo about gentrification and how you 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 destroy a whole area and build a new one and, and everything is it's been there a few years ago now and you can see it like every day in in just roads that you are passing by so you have this kind of image like in in my i i had this kind of image in my mind all the time and actually yeah, yeah it's very like how this area that i shot right now 
it looks like the CGI that Awesome is doing in a way. So it's you know it's it's something that repeat itself all the time so you have it in your mind and 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 in this moment i thought a lot about uh, documenting really documenting that but it's very hard to document that you are not allowed to film this happening and then when i had this area that i showed before there and the people know me so i can have the access to enter without people interrupting me of shooting i i, I took it so it's uh and here it's I don't know about documenting. Yeah, it's it's kind of documenting, but it's kind of documenting and then manipulating this thing with the editing and the narrative and everything. And I think the same like what Abdel Kareem is doing. He's he's he have a real image, but he's like manipulating it in in other way to to mean something different. And it's the same here, like because actually. Uh, I I I'm not saying which area is that. What's really happening? What what is thing? But I felt like I want to get this feel of losing of of like. And here it's not about being nostalgic. It's not about grieving. It's not about something. It's about literally losing what you had once. Like literally looking for your 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 brother in an area that totally destroyed. And this was part of what I was singing all the time because. I don't know. You can't be like romantic against uh, against moving the, the the tanneries because we know how 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 awful it was to live there. How 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 it was like a disaster area already, and it was like the people could die any moment from just this place could be destroyed at any moment. So it's also it was about how. How you know it's okay? It's does never like one dimension. It's always have a lot of things, but the the dimension that you will always get is is losing and destroy, and and this kind of destruction. How 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 you can walk through it and see it, uh, looking for something that that you used to have. So I think this is the idea I had in my mind when I went to go to shooting the film. I I didn't have a, a real story about what's happening i just was decided okay it's someone who's looking for his brother and now there is no clue about that then i thought about okay it's maybe we get into like that people tell stories about his disappearance and then i decided to have just one story that make it like yeah because in in this moment of like total loss people doesn't have a lot and their imagination and this maybe also could work with what you're saying and Marisa was saying about dreams and nightmares it's so you're just having this mysterious story and you never feel it yeah it couldn't be happened maybe it, it was a dream or a nightmare in his mind or something um i have uh, i'm so much tempted to ask uh, Marise about uh especially about the contemporary works of, of um, but how she's seeing this coupling of uh, aesthetic choices of, uh, uh, of the three films related to its production, uh, its produc production style. That we, we have three films, uh, very small queue, very low budget films, how you could see this that so much uh, built on a creativity of the auteur, of the author, of the filmmaker, of the artist in itself to to build his work, uh, especially if it's independent, experimental, uh, art house uh, uh, film or 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 uh, in the uh, artistic framework productions. Um, that also tell us a bit of the of the the production uh, circumstances in Egypt in this last decade. Um, let's. Uh, I mean, it's it's interesting. I'm. It, I think the 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 two sets, despite their very different production circumstances um, are actually using or 
I would like to know more about the the the, the settings of the production, but uh, but the different models are kind of trying to circumvent or navigate the already very um, limiting and debilitating setting of mainstream production, uh, be it for the political reasons, be it for the economic reason, reasons, be it for the existing monopoly that we all know of. And, um, but I think in terms of narrative and in terms of um, finding alternatives, be it through festivals uh, or or visual art or contemporary art that um, that seems to be the space that Abdel Karim and uh, uh, and Asim move through with their films um, or the the festival circuits that um, that also Megan and all three of you have have been moving around through funding or or uh, or those things um, we can't disregard that those spaces that allow for an alternative or for the capacity to create on your own terms and that way it kind of requires that similar similar but different strategic essentialism that Atayot also had to do um, in the way um, I mean it seems that essentialism seems to be a bad word but um, but in in the framework of decolonial struggles and uh, and a lot of um, of theories it's it, it, it's being pragmatic about uh, a tempor temporarily pragmaticness about where you anchor your uh, pitch or your uh, where you become legible to uh, someone who otherwise doesn't give a fuck about what you have to say uh, mm -hmm. in a way. So if if the struggle for Atiyot uh, <clears throat> that that she also like Megan is saying the manipulation of the image, those were the images that were funded that we want to see women speak we want to see women empowered this is how you navigate the the not having to talk or not being able to talk about the other things um so within the developmentalist framework within the 90s and so on um and i'm wondering if there is um that maybe some there is something to that um ability to position our subjectivity or the subjectivity as you present in your different works as um as one as one other maneuver of having uh been 10 or uh, having been in the 2011 moment where this is one of the few times where those things were heard or became legible which mm -hmm. otherwise um would uh if would you would you think that if your films were made now on screen now would they have the same circulation would they have the same appeal would it have been picked up by festivals in the same way um and i think we're now at a very advanced neoliberal moment that um that recognizes the need for a certain imagination a certain ideation of where struggle is or where autonomy is in very particular ways um so yeah, yeah, we have uh, a couple of minutes remaining. Uh, um, I have like I need very small answers from uh, from Asim Abdikrim uh, Nagid. Uh, Abdikrim, I have a question of of uh, that we see uh, of a city that it's. Uh, we have the the noise. Uh, there is a noise of a propaganda of a promises of a certain city, and then we see in your film a vacant city, a desert, a sea. Uh, uh, this abstract uh, uh, images, but the coupling of the individual, the sound and image, is going it does not make it abstract. But make it on on this what you are framing as that what what the promise tell us it's a new you see it as an old in the film how it's framed in the film as an old so I think I need if you tell us a few sentences about how you construct the 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 sound image in this film. The between the narrative and sound and and the image. Mm. 
uh, if I get your question right, uh, uh, I have like I have like I have two stage of how I deal with uh, you know like with this image of uh, almost landscape. Mm. Uh, the intention from the beginning of actually the the idea of fictioning landscape, real real footage and fiction narrative. This kind of juxtaposing between both of them, for me, it is kind of sort of a of, of a language or a method that I'm interested in. So and I I. So I flew over as gazing and seeing. I flew over between different different sort of landscape, where I the, the billboards, as you mentioned, I guess like you mean like the billboard uh, uh, compounds uh, ads and stuff. As uh, of, al although they are very particular and very particular about certain contexts, which is Egypt, sort of the kind of real new real estate, etc. But on the other hand, for me, is a material of how this landscape is a witness. Mm -hmm. So it's a witness of different effects. So for me, this is kind of very fundamental, you know, uh, uh, approach I'm, I'm very care about. There's a landscape as a backdrop of an event that happened in front of. So the landscape is a, it plays out sort of a background, but it's not a background also because it's engaged with, you know, with what was the foreground uh, uh, events that surpass uh, time uh, particularities, uh, geospecificity, all this kind of you know, like surround. So, so the language between fic the fiction, I mean, how the fiction try to the fiction narrative. I mean, here, which is a very textual narrative, uh, narration, etc. What kind of what kind of what kind of language what kind of uh, language here? I mean, like artistic language. What kind of language that can actually deal with the real image, which is landscape, to fictionalize it. And take and 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 somehow like circumvent uh, the time uh, geography and and uh, and uh, any other particular elements to a sort of you know uh, a speculative fiction composed uh, composed between both of them. So, any building up all of this actually this kind of uh, let's say like contrast between different images of. Uh, uh, a vast, uh, a vast uh, land of water. A vast, I mean, like a vast to serve the water. Uh, sort of uh, a desert in friction with somehow like urban uh, uh, construction. It's kind of floating all over different atmosphere or different condition of what we call it a city or what we call it an urban or what we call it, you know, like uh, somehow a development urban uh, 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 scenery. Uh, it was my interest in in this kind of process of fictioning uh, uh, landscape, mm -hmm. like somehow like this small details that also uh, sometimes I feel it's not important, but here maybe because actually we are also like uh, all of us uh, working on uh, in the same uh, geo particular context, like the 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 footage as as most of us here because we are familiar with. Uh, with, uh, uh, with Cairo, uh, you know, we knew that it's actually this image from Cairo, from, you know, like 6 October uh, uh, bridge, uh, October October, or all this kind of uh, monuments that, you know, like surround. But on the other hand, for me, like, uh, I go back to another uh, mention, this kind of uh, how you can actually shoot or, you know, like create footage in the street. It was part of actually, uh, a backdrop, any like a background of how I shoot. I shoot actually most of the video from my balcony in in downtown, as a statical choice, but also because maybe I had the like I had the ambition or the intention to to shoot all to be freely. Uh, I mean, like uh, collecting photos from different uh, angles or from different uh, landscape, but was actually I true I I had already or I didn't choose the safe. Uh, place to shoot so so how i mean like this as as an artistic choice as an intentional artistic choice but also as sort of how to come in over uh you know image and the idea of like fictioning the landscape it was for me again the method of fictioning the landscape it was somehow uh, very compatible to this the whole situation the artistic situation my artistic intention and also I mean, like the context that I'm I'm producing this particular video in. Yeah. Um, I want to get back to Maggot about um, 
a bit of the final uh, segment of the film, which is which we find the the master character of the the subject vanishes uh, as a water metamorphosed as a water, uh, which is take us to 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 the concept and the idea of the truth and truth and what is truth in this film, which is which is take me also to the the in this film actually in how to make this real images through a fictional image but through it there is this uh, observational style there is documentary observational style that is build this fiction build this mystic which is tell us to to um to maybe an idea or a, a proposal of a, a suggestion of thinking of of a truth as a continuation of research for this truth, um, a section of this. And this section of the mystic, which is so much entangled about the heaviness of the, 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 the observational style that you use through this uh, location of collapse. Um, my question is related to building the film, taking this mystic element in, in that you end through it, uh, you end your film of it, and this uh, this building of it, the building of 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 this fiction come out out of this collapse, out of out of this uh, mystic of like we need to continue the search. And also this mystic of that, that uh, we have two choices. You want the truth or you want what is what is been said, which is the truth, actually, which is the search, the but it's but it's actually very factual. So I think um constructing this also uh because that it's how you construct my question of how you are constructing this idea that you have two options that it's you want the truth or you want what these people are saying and actually in following what people are saying we find the truth so how you construct this navigating this collapse scene that you are uh, building in the film and following in the film yeah so yeah i think it's it's Similar to what I was saying in, in the previous question, it's about like dreams and nightmares. It's about you you can how 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 this thing is I don't know like how how kind of if you are saying that there is something that you call an urban legend and you know it's there is something real about that. Maybe there is exaggerating. Maybe there is like manipulating the story, but. Yeah, maybe there is something happened, and then people are magnifying it in a way, or or, or having killing it in a, in a different way. So for me, that was kind of the thing about that that this place is like like you were saying it's about saying the documentary style. It's like so following the guy, so his eyes seeing the place all the time. But also, you know, it's it's this place. This place is not becoming real anymore. This place is. Right now, it's becoming uh, something that was exist. I don't know, like a legend or or or, or something that it's no uh, no longer here. And and in this idea, I don't know. Maybe it just the, the, like beyond the truth or what or people were saying. And yeah, maybe he didn't. You know, he just don't know, you know what happened. But he hears this story being repeated in a way, which is very similar to what kind of you see in this place that these places have like a running river in the middle and you feel like yeah maybe people were thrown in this river and disappeared forever or something like that so it's it's the the idea of the running water in the middle of this destroyed place which got me in the idea of being this guy was disappeared on water like in a in, in, in this way maybe he was get killed and thrown in the water or he just Vanished out of their eyes. So I think 
it was something that I built through the landscape of the place itself, which got me this idea of of, of vanishing in the wood. Yeah. Um, ending was awesome. That it's our my final question, and then we will close uh, this amazing discussion for me. Uh, Asim, um I still want to 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 know from you uh, more. Uh, if you could elaborate more on the on the uh, your proposal of the infrastructure, the discussion of the infrastructure in the film of that that's we we also we see. Uh, an appraising and an Egyptian revolution of 2011, and we also the emergence in your film, the the proposal, the beginning of what you are discussing on the idea of the stack and the 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 stack infrastructure, and also this takes us to from the the relationship that we have. The relationship with that we have in these ten years, in relation to this step, that takes us to 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 the domination of what you are ending with. The, the, this is speculation of of sand, uh, but actually, how how we think, how we think of of um, uh, through this infrastructure, through this step, through different imagination of infrastructure, how we could also speculate from this infrastructure a heaven out uh, of, of, of this permanent catastrophe. Yeah, thank you, Ali, for the question. Can you hear me? Yeah. Great. Um... Yeah, I'll try to find a way to leave uh, like all the questions together into one answer. Um, but but for 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 me in the film, uh, the stack, which is this planetary scale computation, uh, along with this infrastructure that has been, uh, we've kind of been asking ourselves like, and after the internet in the nineties until the the times of two thousand eleven. What are these new forms of communication, social media, or whatever, and this infrastructure mean, uh, or what ca can they do? And obviously, there was a certain kind of, or this is how I like to see it. Obviously, it's within this theory fiction framework uh, that um, part of the 2011 moment was was because uh, a new form of a new order of infrastructure has revealed itself, has managed to find a way. Uh, to connect with how people use it and how they understand it and they inhabit it. And that was some sort of an alien form almost, uh, attacking uh, the old uh, idea of the nation state in a way. And, and for me, the new capital became a sort of a response to that moment in every way, you know, uh, not just a political response, but an infrastructure response, the decision to make it I don't know, 30 kilometers outside of Cairo that turn it into a smart city inhabited with all these technologies of surveillance. That's, that's, that's the plan for it. Uh, and of course, uh, make it a haven for the new middle class that should go there. As, and all these are some sort of protective strategies. Like one of the images that, is, that are very telling of the thinking of this infrastructure comes from early, uh, in the early days when they were still designing the models for the for the new capital. They had a simulation of uh, one of the biggest squares there, it's the People's Square, I think it's called, Medani Shah, or something like that. And the the you know usually in any architectural simulation you give scales through human figure, and they wanted to give a scale for the street by how many tanks can you put in the street, you know. That was the image, the street full of tanks. And obviously <laughs> it translates to the kind of thinking behind what are these people building and how do they see this place and what are the main primary concerns in a way. And, um, and just jumping to that, it's, it's sorry, you know- it's, Sorry, I forgot a question. You are talking about a military tank? Yeah. Oh, really? Okay. 
Yeah, the simulation has like a battalion of tanks filling the streets. This is to tell you how big is the square. Um, so, I mean, it explains itself in a way. But, but, uh, but just like it's a dialectic, it's a mode of deterritorialization in that sense. So you have the stack that has, or this infrastructure mode that uh, generated a certain kind of movement, and you have the state is trying to, you know, Levi's in revenge, trying to uh, find its own way to counter that. But of course, uh, the problem is that uh, they are betting against time. You know, they are not thinking about climate change. They are not. They have this. Uh, the infrastructure, like also as speculated in the film, are are, are kind of uh, uh, the speculative statecraft becoming more. Uh, based on the real estate model of uh, financial speculation. We, we take the sand, turn it into something that has value, try to sell it to the highest price. And obviously it's a recipe for disaster. This, this way, commodifying the future and turning that social contract, social contract actually, the national project into certain sort of a commodification of a future. And I don't know if there is any positive note to, um, to tell you about to 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 end this on, but the only thing I can think of, like it's a it's a it's just a test. What do you ask yourself if you want to uh, want to know if you're living in a colonialist times or not? Uh, are, are you able to tell your stories? It's very simple. Can you tell your stories? You know, if the answer is no, then obviously you know where you are. And uh, and and just an like expansion of this idea of the future present. I believe that. Unfortunately, this is where you find yourself. The present becomes the battleground for the imaginaries of the future. Which imaginary of futures you can actually put through and fight for in that present? Yeah, I don't know if that answers it. If I may say something You're muted, that... Bob. You're muted. No, sorry. I'm sorry, I was just saying um, uh, it's uh, very sad and it's very ending for the discussion because I think Maris was wants to to say a final note before we close. Very, very quickly, just what um what your what all your answers made me think of uh, in relation to the else film is the idea that infrastructure is also people and people can also be an infrastructure that functions not necessarily uh functions within uh, going through a future and living a present and um continuation of the past but there is always a meanwhile um that is between all those temporalities and the managing of this meanwhile um uh is also a form of um a transient and a temporary um dealing with the dystopic and uh, the, the the impossibility of a future be it environmental political or economic um, and I think that was kind of the beauty in, in Atiyah's films, that there is something happening in the meanwhile of all the meta and micro and macro uh, disasters. But thank you. Thank you, Amir. Um I think uh, this makes such a very good ending for our discussion of like thinking of, of some methods for um, exit futures uh, and municipatory futures from um, this um, wars, the cracks of 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 different different paths, uh, near paths or very far paths, and also of um, thinking of a futurity, the ability of futurability out of that when the artistic imagination could tackle. The dominant of uh, the dominant political imagination to uh, more uh, open uh, that actually this is could be the the what we something that we need in this discussion of permanent catastrophe of of a, of a static imagination artistic imagination is really uh, questioning the political imagination and thinking and making proposing words and proposing imagination for it. 
thank you so much for the discussion. I'm really, really appreciating this discussion. Thank you all for it. Thank you, uh, artists, for hosting us. And I really want you, all the audiences that watch us, to see the old films, the three films by Atiyat, Dreams for Dreams, Girl Still Dream, and Rawya, and uh, the three different films by uh, Gazing and Singh by Muhammad Abdi Kareem, um, uh, 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 Everything Under Heaven by Asim Hindawi, and All What Follows Is True by uh, Magid Nader. Uh, thank you, Marie, so much for your uh, amazing insights about the, the, the whole discussion of, of Atiyah Sultan and other films. And uh, I want to thank you all, Abdul Karim, Magid, and Asim. And uh, I hope you enjoy the uh, this discussion and the films. And uh, have a good day. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you thank very you. much, Ali, for the invitation. Thank you, everyone, thank for you. the amazing discussion. Thank you, everyone. Bye-bye.